Test the letter, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Tibetan Intermediate Conversation class. And today we're going to discuss, so previously we have been discussing some of the uh, prepositions uh, which we use uh, in our day-to-day -day conversation. So today we're going to talk about some of the other particles. The more uh, these particles are more uh, in a way, these particles are not directly stated in the gr grammatical text, but as the Tibetan language evolved, these particles played an important role uh, in uh, many aspect uh, of many aspect of defining the language to be more dynamic. So they also have certain function, definitely, uh, and these function are very different from the ones that we have studied. Uh, if uh, some of you have studied the uh, grammatical structure, uh, grammatical aspect of Tibetan language, and some of those are similar. Uh, but in any case, so we're only going to explore the usage in terms of uh, daily conversation rather than trying to uh, trying to uh, analyze them in terms of grammatical uh, grammatical uh, in in terms of in terms of grammar we're simply going to see the general usage in terms of conversation and some of these particles may not uh, come uh, as handy in terms of or it may not come uh, as often as in usage in terms of conversation, but they do appear uh, quite a lot in terms of uh, writing uh, that is literature. So in those, you can find some of the usage. Though it is not, uh, though it is not against the rule to use it while you speak. But uh, usually, uh, we don't see many people using it. But still, uh, these are quite important and useful particles. So uh, we'll be exploring some of these particles. So this is not the extent. This is the uh, first few set of the uh, particles. Uh, we'll also explore some of the others. And then probably uh, we'll also uh, discuss usage of the so we have the aphorisms that we have so uh, similarly we'll you will also discuss usage of these aphorisms in our day-to-day -day conversation and many of these are just to provide an example and it is not only uh it is not only uh these type these type of uh, aphorisms or uh, some of these proverbs are not only uh, a sort of traditional uh, usage in Tibetan language, they are also used a lot in many different languages. So uh, we'll just see the usage and then uh, at the end we'll try to uh, we'll try to see how everything that we have learned can be used in our daily conversation and then have an idea on how we are actually building up that particular uh, Tibetan conversation that we are trying to uh, speak. Okay, so before we go to the main topic, uh, let us begin with the aphorism. So today's aphorism is Nyawa matona sangye la yimiche. So let me repeat this. Nyawa matona sangye la yimiche. Nyawa matona sangye la yimiche. So what does it mean? It means that if one does not see the hell, uh, faith in Buddha does not arise in oneself. So what it says, so it has, uh, uh, there is another saying in Tibetan. Uh, it says that only when one is facing, so the, uh, the meaning of which uh, is similar to this. It says that only when one, uh, one is faced with a very dire situation or a situation that is beyond one's capacity uh, that one finally uh, realizes that uh, 
realizes whom to take refuge in, like, or what to do. So that could also be a particular habit that one could have. One would not know the importance of a lifestyle until and unless one faced with a certain situation. Similarly, the habits. So here uh, it says that one does not arise any faith. And uh, here the example is given. Uh, here it's directly stated Buddha. But what can one can also think about uh, righteousness or virtuous thinking or good thinking. So until and unless one doesn't face a very dire situation, uh, the faith in something good or something uh, moral doesn't arise within them. So this is the this is the essential understanding. But a direct and the direct translation would means that would would mean one does not believe in Buddha until and unless one has seen the f hell. Meaning that until and unless one doesn't face a certain situation where they need to be protected, they don't see the importance of the protector. Or until and unless one doesn't meet with a particular, uh, let's say, a particular situation where they need to pay a penalty that uh, one doesn't understand the importance of discipline. Something like this. So this is the meaning of today's aphorism. So let me repeat it again. Okay, so with this, let us begin our uh, lesson today. So today we are going to talk about three particular set of uh, uh, three particular set of particles. The reason why it's called other particles is because these are not the particles that we usually uh, discuss in the when we when we study Tibetan grammar. In Tibetan grammar, we usually study two groups of uh, particles: dependent and in independent particles. And these particles are none of them. And so these are other particles, other in the sense that they are not stated in the grammatical text. But they do have a great significance uh, in terms of uh, the usage of the Tibetan language. And few of these very often, and some of them are seen used in the literature rather than spoken. But still, all of these are used quite often. So the first one is, uh, so let me read this one in Tibetan first, and then we'll look at the names in English. So the first one is, He ki nyam te. Te means particle. He means a mind or heart, or something that has to do with the mental state. He ki nyam te. Nyamgyur means a sort of change, a sort of state, a sort of expression. Dumba means to show, to depict. So a particle that shows or depicts a change or a sort of uh, a state of the mind or the heart. Seishi seje gitche. Seishi selche gitche. Seishi means uh, more, it, it talks more about a quantitative understanding, which shows a particular quantity of something. So these particles show, it, it may refer to a quantity of something, like uh, it may be a definite quantity or uh, indefinite quantity. But uh, these are particles that has to do with quantity. Then the final one is, how to say jigite. How to means something that has still not been stated, meaning that something that is yet to be, something that is still left to be stated. Something that has to be stated after something. So it's more like continuation of statement. So continuative particle. So there are three types of particles that we are, three types of particle, three sets of particles that we are going to decide, uh, discuss today. The first one is a particle, yiginyum uh, gyutdempeche that shows a change in the mind or the mental state or the heart state or emotions. Second one, Tseshi Seje Gitche, a particle that uh, deals with uh, quantity. 
And then finally, how do you say Jigita? Uh, it is a particle that deals with continuation or continuative particle. So first one is particles showing emotions. So a particle that will that functions to show a particular emotion or a state of mind. Second one, particles showing quantity. It may be a definite or an indefinite quantity. And then finally is continuative particles. We have the same name, continuative particles, uh, in grammatical text, but this and that continuative particles, though they share the same translation in English, are not the same. So this is something that should be understood. Uh, both of them are termed continuative particles. But one must understand that this is the other particles. This is not the main particle which is discussed in the text of Tibetan grammatical system. So therefore, these are other particles. So continued particles of the other particles. Okay, so uh, the first one, particles showing emotions, or in Tibetan, so particles showing emotions. So mostly when we say emotions, it's more like a state of exclamation, to exclaim. It's more like interjection, more like exclamation. So previously we talked about the preposition and most probably many of us have already understood, uh, many of us already know about the mingzi uh, or the naming words in Tibetan. So we we did not we did uh, we did uh, a decent amount of uh, we did we did a de decent amount of uh, discuss on the verb and the tenses, but uh, still um, very thorough and the de uh, the very a uh, more thorough and more in depth understanding about the verb and tenses. Uh, could be uh, understood uh, in the text of the gender signs, which uh, has one section which deals only with the verb and tenses, subject and object. And we will discuss that both in grammar and in conversation, but it will be discussed in um, advanced conversation classes. Not, uh, not here, because then we dive into the very nature of the verb. So, as well as the very nature of the subject. So here, uh, in this intermediate course, we have done uh, uh, not just a surface level, but rather uh, a little, uh, a little, uh, much, uh, a much deeper understanding of uh, than the surface level understanding of verb and subject. So this will become the foundation for later to understand what verbs are. How do we differentiate them in Tibetan uh, grammatical system? Because at, at the very advanced level of conversation, uh, conversation has to, be, uh, has to be consistent with the grammatical system. So it's inevitable that we will have to talk about a few of the more important grammatical concepts when we talk about conversation. Right now, we can be more lenient in those, not too lenient, but still, we can be a little lenient in those aspects. Uh, rather than talking a lot about the grammatical aspect, we can talk about more about uh, the sentence, uh, the statements and how dialogues, uh, how, how, to, how to use these uh, scripts or the statements that we have so these uh, particles could be understood more like an interjection, an exclamation, that is. So we have four particles here. First one is gemma, 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 gemma. The second one is atsi, 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 atsi. And the third one is emaho, emaho. Emaho, emaho, and the final one is hehe. And this is quite simple, since you can already hear me saying hehe. It is like haha. So it's just uh, an interjection that shows a sort of 
uh, an emotion which has to do with uh, laughter. So this 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 probably is the easiest one out of the four because the moment I pronounce it, it seems that uh, it is already depicting its nature. So hey <laughs> hey. Uh, so this one is something I think that many of you have already heard, especially those of you who are more interested in uh, reading or listening to the uh, biography of uh, biography of great scholars or great uh, practitioners or yogis and yogins of Tibet. Uh, in those biography, you might have heard of uh, you might heard this particular word, emaho, and also in the text. Definitely. This particular one is also used in the uh, Praise to Dependent Origination by Lama Tsongkhapa. Okay, so, Kema. So, Kema, kema is a exclama it's an exclamation which is used to show a certain emotion of sadness. A certain emotion of sadness or sorrow. Saying so, so normally understood as saying alas. So trying to show an emotion or trying to show the state or trying to exclaim, showing a great deal of so sorrow or sadness. So first let me read each of these sentences and then uh, I have also the same I have also the same sentences in English so we can discuss this. Uh, in English also. Kema. Kema. Kelkum chempo. Netan tetrakyo. Let me repeat this. Kema. Kelkum chempo. Netan tetrakyo. Definitely, if this was a poetry, uh, there would have been more of an exaggeration while I would pronounce it. So it should be also understood that if I am reading a statement, I will read it more in terms of a statement rather than pouring more emotions. But usually when we read Kema, uh, it's, it shows a great sadness. So if we have this in a poetry, uh, the expression would be more exaggerated. My voice would be quite different. Uh, it will, even with uh, from the tone of my voice, you will understand that uh, currently I'm expressing a great sorrow. But that happens when I'm reading, either if I'm reading a script or I'm reading a poetry. But since this is just an example, uh, I will be limiting the amount of exaggeration that I will be uh, imputing upon this particular word. So trying to read it uh, with focus on the pronunciation rather than the actual nature of the word and trying to convey the uh, sorrow. So, kema. Okay, so uh, the second one, Atsi. Atsi is also an uh, exclamation that shows a great deal of, it's, it's a great deal of sorrow. At the same time, there is a, there is a hint of uh, disappointment with this. A shock with a sorrow, disagreement, disappointment, something like that. It may show sorrow or sadness it may show sadness but not in a sadness where one feels a sort of sorrow in a way that one has broken down no it's more like uh feeling sorry sadness in a term of feeling sorry but then at the same time a hint of disappointment and a, a hand a, a hint of uh dis disappointment and displeasure so the degree so the it is sorrow. Both of these exclaim sorrow at the same time. But as you can see, one is like feeling the sorrow or sadness and a sort of breaking down afterwards. Whereas Atsi is more like feeling sorry for something with a hint of disappointment and displeasure. Atsi. Atsi. Dindra Mache. Atsi. Dindra Mache. Atsi. Dindra Mache. And then uh, the third one, emaho, uh, it is used to, it's an exclamation of expressing a great sort of uh, surprise because something very miraculous has happened. Something very miraculous has happened. So in a way to express it with a great surprise, 
a very joyous and surprising event has happened. So uh, to see something as thoroughly amazing or wondrous or wonderful, Emaho, la meze bang wa tsarche. 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 Okay, so the final one is hehe, which is uh, an expression or an, uh, a word that exclaims to show a sort of laughter, that something that arouse, arise laughter from someone, something that is funny. When something is funny, so naturally arising laughter. So, hehe, can I get you to say something like Hehe. Kenanki Gumze Shevatela, good etro. Hehe, Kenanki Gumze Shevatela, good etro. This particular phrase is a very useful phrase. So I recommend everyone of you to adopt this particular phrase. Good etro means it's very laughable. Good etro. And it's a very standard usage of the word. It's a very good usage of the word. Uh, if you, uh, this is also, uh, this is also a word that, uh, appears in one of the verse uh it's in the it's it's in the uh in the sutra of uh arya uh, katayana uh it's one story where he goes to a house to ask for arms and then uh he's because of his clearer ones he could see uh that the uh he could see that uh, a person has a child in his arm and he's feeding on a fish and then there is a dog which is eating its bone and then the person is kicking the dog and then through the clearer ones he could see that uh there was a karmic connection of the past life and then uh, he see that he see because of the clearer ones he see that how meaningless the entire existence is that in one lifetime what could be one's mother and in next lifetime that mother could be the uh could could be reborn as the dog of that house and the mother that has always took care of the child in the greatest care were being hit by the child because now it was a dog and could not be recognized by the child. So he says, uh, how laughable is the uh, existence or the samsara? He said, kola which means that how laughable is the cyclic existence? So this very phrase, is a very standard usage. Uh, it comes both in the treaties and the sutras. So very good phrase. Uh, usually we would say, Gemosho, which means that it is very laughable. Gemoshorwa means to laugh. Gemosho. Or Gertrobo, which means something that is very laughable. One way to say is Gertrobo, which means it's a very laughable thing. Okay, so these four exclamations that we have, kema, atsi, emaho, and hehe, are a sort of interjection. The first one shows a great sorrow. Second one shows sadness, but in terms of feeling sorry or disappointed. Third one shows a great joyous, a great joy, as well as uh, being uh, surprised. Surprise in a good way. And then, uh, hehe is an exclamation that shows a uh, laughter. Another form of emma ho is emma that many of you might have also encountered. Okay, so uh, the first one. Kema, gilkam chempo netan titrakyo. This would be understood as, alas, how poor is the situation of the one's great kingdom. So one is saying it in a tone. So for example, this person could be from this uh, great kingdom and then uh, he might have gone traveling. And then at certain point, this kingdom might have, they, he might have gone traveling for many years. And once he returns back, he looks that he finds the one's great uh, kingdom, which is, which may be his hometown or his uh home because of war or 
any other reason has been uh, reduced to a very poor state. So, alas, how poor is the situation of the once great kingdom? The second one, Atsi, Dindramache, is, ah, don't do this. In a way saying like, uh, in a way being, in this case, ah, means being alarmed as at the same time, uh, a sort of disagreement and a little bit of disappointment at the same time. So saying that, oh, ah, don't do this. Like if we, if one would see uh, someone doing something improper, uh, then they would call to them in exclamation. So, ah. Don't do this is Atsi Dinde Machi. And in some some uh, in some usage, this can also be understood as an exclamation of sorrow. Like, ah, please don't do such such a thing. When some is someone is shocked as well as well as feeling sorrow. The third one, which is Emaho, La Mitsi means oh how wondrous so it's oh how wond how miraculous is the so oh in a sense that one is feeling a is is thoroughly captivated by the miracle so oh how miraculous is the virtuous activity of my guru then hey hey so showing a sort of uh, showing a ex exclaiming to show that something is laughable. Haha. <laughs> the reasoning you provided is laughable. So in these four, usually uh, we find Atsi and Hehe to be used very frequent in uh, most of the conversation. But uh, Kema and Emaho is used more in literature rather than speaking, but it doesn't mean that one cannot use it. There is no restriction upon the usage. It's simply, uh, it's there's no restriction on the usage. It's simply that uh, one does not find anyone using it these days. Like I said, some things may be correct, but because of the um, change, in the society because of the change in the usage of the language throughout many many years hundreds probably thousands when it comes to Tibetan language probably few hundreds and few centuries to a millennia because the language itself is almost 13 1300 years old which is this language this this current uh system of writing we're not talking about the uh, original, some of the original writing style that emerged before this, but this very system, it was first introduced during the seventh century. So now almost 13 to 1400 years of history, and it went through three uh, big language revisions. So you see that even though there may be something that was used in the past, uh, but these days mostly found in the uh, literature rather than uh, usage or in day-to-day -day life. But one is not restricted. Uh, one is not restrained to not use it. One is uh, one can use it but normally we don't do it because no one uses it in the conversation. But the usage is thus as you have seen Kema is more like alas. Atsi is ah. Or like ah. If more said ah. And uh, Emaho is more like oh, how wondrous, how wonderful, how miraculous. Like oh, in a sense that someone is captivated, completely captivated. <clears throat> hey, hey, for laughing when one have to, one thinks something is very laughable. So let's find something to be very funny. Or something that is ridiculous also. 
if one wants to use it as in terms of sarcasm, also one can use it. So this is the four particles showing emotions. Uh, and, uh, so some of the, like I said, these two can be used in daily conversation. Another example for Atsi would be Atsi Tsi. Or you, because sometimes to put more emphasis, one repeats the word itself. And mostly done in the Central Tibet, so Central Tibetan dialect, the repetition of the same word to uh, put emphasis is uh, uh, it's more, uh, it's something that's more uh, towards the Central Tibetan dialect. But still, that's it. it. If one is showing a certain type of uh, disappointment, which means uh, everything that I have done has been in vain. And sometimes one can... Uh, so, uh, since many of the exclamation that you see are not used in the conversation, sometimes we use Atsi as a form of exclamation in many cases also in terms of uh, showing surprise Atsi oh what is the haste as you can see so as you see when certain type of things become a, a norm or a normal way of doing things sometimes if we reduce the number of words, there is certain type of compensation that is uh, done. And then in those cases, some words are used for multiple uh, cases. And one such thing is Atsi. Okay, now the second one is particle showing quantity. Quantity, uh, it may not be a definite quantity. So, uh, and also, uh, it, it may be something that uh, may not directly be talking about the quantity of things in terms of how much is there. So, the first one is che. 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 Second one is tempo. 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 The third one is kebar. Kepar, kepar, kepar. Che means, uh, che is a word that uh, is used in conversation, but also mostly in the literature. Timbo, uh, some of you must have heard this word, timbo, but uh, some of you must have heard the other variation, which means the same, like, uh, these are also a uh, word that has the same meaning as tempo, the word like chungzam, which means a little, bokzam, a bit. And then uh, there is chungzam, uh, bokzam. Then we have nyungzam, which means a little, or nyungu, which means less. So these are different variations of tempo. Tempo has the same meaning as this. So most of the time you might have uh, heard the usage Tokzam, Nyungzam, Tets. And then if you are more, if you have heard uh, more of the Central Tibetan dialect, then you must have heard the word Lets. All of these have similar meaning. Then Kebar, which is to talk more over, something like more over. So the first one, Zambuningi che tome mi chisoni redangun ki yu. Let me repeat this. Zambuningi che tome mi chisoni redangun ki yu. Zambuningi che tome mi chisoni redangun ki yu. So when you read, you can take pause or you can read it 
as a, you can read it continuously. That depends on you entirely. But I find that when you pause a little bit, it sounds much better. <clears throat> Especially if you are trying to read something for a longer duration of time, it's much better. So, the second one to so let uh, let us go to the English translation to see what each of this uh, these particle actually uh, mean. So the first one che means very. Tembu means a bit or a little or a tiny. Chungzam, a little bit. Tosam, a bit. Tembu, a bit. Kebar. Keper actually means uh, uh, keper. Uh, the word keper actually means extra. But here we have used it with keper to papa. So now this entire unit has its own meaning. But the very usage of keper is extra or more. It means extra or more. So the first one. The very first society of human on the earth were hunter gatherers. So the very, so che, che means very, che tokma means very first, che sangwa means very good. Then, tempu, to do tempu shi ki che ngala nyuro. Please listen here or listen to me. For a bit. So tempo a bit here. I mean here that word time is inferential. So it says listen to me here for a bit or for a little while. So tempo is understood as a bit. Uh, he is a noble person. Noble because of the word papa. Kebar to papa means uh, someone that is an extraordinary. Kebar to papa means someone that is more than, more than, or more than, uh, <clears throat> it's like more than an average person, an extraordinary being. So here it is directly translated as noble. Noble, like, uh, I think those of you who have uh, joined me for the Tarma vocabulary uh, classes before uh, have done the same for the Heart Sutra where we have the sons and daughters of the noble family. The noble here refers to noble by deed and merits. And it refers to the noble family of the Bodhisattvas and noble family of the Arahats. So here the noble person means someone who has great mm, merits, good merits, and great morals. So other usage, uh, che, uh, mm, uh, uh, okay, we can say for example, uh, let me take uh let me just take one slide so that I can write. Let me write so I think writing would be better. Tarinki Che. So we Natal Te Ni Dida Ko. So, uh, it means 
the very important or the very main the very main issue of today is thus so che zo means the very main so che can be used as very uh but uh understand that the usage is a little different from the word hajang kosobo hajang chembodo kosobo che chembodo it doesn't work like this che means very ill in the term that the actual thing meaning the very thing when we say this is the very thing that you were trying to uh, acquire very not in a sense to say that this is very big or very small it's to say the very thing tempo mm -hmm. kasa kala mm -hmm. sa uh, kala tempo Mm -hmm. Se Chesun. Kasan Kala Trembu Se Chesun, which means yesterday I have eaten a bit much. So yesterday I have eaten a bit much, meaning that I have eaten more than a little more than what I was capable of. Mm -hmm. Kebartu Mansu. Mm -hmm. Uh, so keparto here means moreover moreover we should speak good tibetan so keparto more sometimes with the particle two it means moreover or more uh moreover yes uh so as you can see that just by integrating integrating these particles in your tibetan conversation you can actually make it uh make it into a more standardized tibetan uh, speaking you can and definitely these particles can also be used in um, like like these like for example these particles like che and kebar like i said these are mostly used in the literature but then they can also be used in conversation. And when they're used in conversation, these are used in a more formal setting. So if you are going to speak more formally, these can be a very, these particle can be a very important uh, part of your Tibetan vocabulary inventory. Meaning that it could be a very important part of your uh, inventory of words vocabulary that you can use in a formal setting and also in a more academic sense so these can be used also in a more academic sense like i said it is used in literature so definitely it, it could also play a great role uh to uh to be used in a more academic sense of speaking So the final set is continuative particle. First one is masse. Masse. Some of this you might have heard. Masse. Or uh, all of this. Who knows? Uh, you might have heard all of these or you might have heard some of these. But definitely the more often the use, the ones which are used more often, you must have heard them used. For example, masse. Masse. Tasu. Tasu. Tasu, Tasu, Tana, 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 Tatung, 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 Tatung. So make sure that when you are also, if you are listening the recording afterward, make sure that you're also listening to the pronunciation because I'm putting uh, a great, uh, I'm putting a little bit of emphasis on the pronunciation also over here because uh the reason is that sometimes uh if you are and the way i'm reading it at this point i'm not reading it as a combined more 
Moreover, I'm putting more emphasis as a combination of uh, a combination of uh, a single unit as uh, as as a unit of a consonant and a vowel. So therefore, I'm also uh, putting a great emphasis on trying to sound it in a way that we do during the character reading so that the pronunciation would be much clearer. Otherwise, this would be sound like tadung, which is incorrect because this cannot have the sound of dung. Tadung. It has to have tadung. Tung. Because we, we don't see any other word that is uh, capable of changing the sound of ta. There is no crown letter, there is no uh, there is no crown letter, nor there is any uh, footer letter, nor there is a prefix letter that is capable of changing the sound of this. So it becomes ta tung. It retains the original sound of ta. So ma se, ma se, ta su, ta na, ta tung. Okay, so let me read this sentence first. So also emphasis on this particular particle sa and the sound of sa and ta usually what it does is that it shortens the stretch of the sound. Normally it's nga. Nga. But with sa, it becomes nge, nge. So you see that the sound is shortened. So nge. Kera la lam de cheba ma se. Roba ya che gyu. Kene kene gyu ye. Nge. Kera la lam de cheba ma se. Roba ya che gyu. Kene gyu ye. So uh, as you can see, what has happened is let me take this very sentence here and i'll sh i will show you some i'll just uh okay so this sentence uh would be pronounced as uh will be read as so here do you see a pause when i make now, let me just add a single word here. And the uh, pause will sh uh, shift, meaning that the pause will be different. So I have just changed this uh, to present tense and then made this into future tense. The thing is that since this is a future tense, there is no use of writing future tense here. So, uh, so you see that I have added this word here. Now, uh, let us listen to this one first. Nye kera la lam dun chepa ma se ropa ya chagyu ke lengyu yin. Here we see a pause between ke and len. Here, nge kera la lam dun cheba ma se ropa ya cheba kele chagyu yin. Now you have seen that in this case, I have read these two together. But in this case, I have put a pause in between. And the reason is quite simple because here the, the word ke lingyu yin means to make promise. Here the word kele means promise. So this is a noun here, whereas here, this is the only noun, whereas this becomes a different verb. It means to take upon. Le means to take upon. So uh, the word, uh, the word uh, le, it, it means to take upon oneself, to undertake, to take upon oneself. So here, here, 
means the word K is the only word. It's an abbreviation. It's just a half word, which means to take or uh, to promise. It means promise. So this is the noun. And this is the verb. Ne. So here, this is not kene. This is ke ne. So two separate words. But here it is the single word kene, which means promise. And why we have why we have written just one ne? Because if I would have written it as kene linguis, you can see that the repetition makes it sound so terrible. It should have been like this way. Because it is two words. One is kene, the second one is linguin. But since this sounds very terrible, we just settle for one le for the two le. So uh, it should be understood. So we, it is a inference that we understand that one le goes with the ke, but the other le is a verb. So nge kera la lam dun che ma se. Because K is now a different word, which itself also means kene, meaning promise. Len means to take. To take. So I take or I I I will take the promise uh in that way. But in this case, we don't need to separate these, we don't need to we 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 haven't read it separately because now this kene itself we don't have to write it as kene in this way because now the verb is not le the verb is cha which means to do so therefore you see that just by adding the verb here this has this entire thing has become a noun whereas in this case this was a noun and this was the verb and if you understand this you will know that here you have to make the pause otherwise you will be uh you will be uh confused you will think oh this is kene so i should read it as so you will read it as because you know that the word kene means promise so you think that this means promise but now that you know that Ke ne is two word, which means kene ne. But since it's a repetition and it sounds terrible, we don't write the first ne. We settle for just one ne. But now the thing that makes that 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 creates a distinction, telling us that okay, here this is the verb, this is the noun, is that we make a pause here. So instead of reading it as kera ne kera la lam dun chaba masi roba yang chagu kene guin, we read it as. So this pause also tells us that, oh, okay, len is not a part of the word ke, kene, but len is the verb here. But now if I just add a verb that is here, I have added cha. And because I've added cha here, which is future tense, I've changed this from the future tense here to a present tense because I don't need to make it I don't need double future here. So nye kena la lam dun chepa masi roba ya chepa kene chaguin. Now you see that this kene is this ne is a part of the name kene. So these are some things which uh which uh helps us to improve our reading as well as understand the text in the proper manner or anything that has written that has been written in a proper manner so this is something that i wanted to clarify because uh it just came came spontaneously while i was reading i thought oh this must be this 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 is something that needs to be clarified because it will help in both reading and understanding comprehending the very sentence so this is here now, uh, is a usage, it has different variation. Another variation for wochu is woshi. One can say woshi. Hako. Woshi. 
Hak olsun. Or one could say, Moche olsun. Moche means to recognize. Moche means to recognize. Hako means to know. But Moche and Moche both means recognize. Two variation. Tasu tamba Moche olsun. Tana pege zangma. Che yu yang. Rengi ki rikshun tang. Lam su sun wade. Tana pege zangma che yu yang. Rengi ki rikshun tang. Lam su sun wade. Tana. Pege zangma che yu yang. Rengi ki rikshun tang. Lam su sun wade. Kera tatung. Che yu yube. Kera tatung. Che yu yube. Kera tatung she yu yube. Or kera la tatung she yu yube. You can use la or you can also skip it. Like I said, sometimes when there is repetition of so, sometimes if there is excess number of, it's not grammatically incorrect, but sometimes when you see too many repetitions of a particles, similar type of particles in a single statement, uh, you can sometimes skip one or two. Okay, let us see what it means. Masse means uh, but. Oh, sorry, uh, masse means, it can also mean but also, or it could also means also. I will promise, so this, Nye kera la lam dun che pa masse rokwa yan che gyu ke nengyu yin. I will promise not only to instruct you, but also to assist you. So masse here is understood as but also. Sometimes also. Tasu tamba wochesun. Only now I recognize the saint. The saint. So tasu means only. Uh, sorry, tasu means only now. Tasu means only now. Tana, pege zangma chegyu yang rengi ki rikshon ta lamsu suare. At the very least, speaking proficient Tibetan is a way to protect the tradition and culture. At the very least means tana. So when we say this is the least that can be done, you can at least do this, or at the very least you can do this, or at the very least this can be done. So tana means at the very least. Tadung means do you still have something to say? Tadung means still. Do you still have something to say? So other examples. Mm, uh, let me do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, nye tuba tuwa ma se, nye tuba tuwa ma se, tato momo chu se ba yi. Nye tuba tuwa ma se, tato momo chu se ba yi. I didn't only, uh, I didn't, I ate, uh, I, I, I drank or I had uh, noodles and still I ate 10 uh, momos. And then uh, tana. So let me. Mm. Tana. Ngan tsu. Chopo la la. Ropa te zam. Che. Che. Ba te ni. Uh. 
Okay, so uh, mm, in this particle still is a continuation of an activity in relation. Uh, yes, uh, the tadung means uh, it's it's a continuation, as in there is an activity that or something that will still be done, or continuation in terms of something that's is still uh to happen so yes uh it's uh it may or may not it may or may not uh have the same usage as the continuum particles that we have studied lasso okay tana ngansu chopo lala ropa tesam cheba teni ngansu linge reto it means that at the very least to to, to help you uh, to help, uh, sorry, this one is, oh, okay, this is uh, fine. So, uh, at least, uh, at the very least, to help you, oh friend, uh, from us to help you this much is our responsibility. So, at the very least. Mm -hmm. uh, uh it means uh so sometimes tashu also means right now it's more like now sometimes only now sometimes right now so right now it is the sun is shining very bright or very hot or it's a very hot sun oh uh, masi okay Mm hmm. Uh. Mm hmm. Thari leka sama sarva masi suni leko suni leka chagwar. Mm hmm. Samlo Kor Tani Lega Tama Tawama Se Sani Lega Chawar Samlo Kor, which means, uh, not only, uh, not only, uh, did he or she finish today's work, but they are also thinking about tomorrow's work. So also in this case. So these are the particles, the continuative particles. These are the continuative particles. So the word that we studied today. So the first one is rikshun, which means tradition, a tradition of a, a country. Uh, Lamsu, culture. Seba is virtuous activity. Like we have the 12 virtuous activity of Buddha. Seba chungi. We call it Zepa Chungi. Let me write this here. Zepa Chungi, which is the 12 virtuous activity of Buddha. Uh, then we have Gelkam, which means kingdom. Gelkap is country. Gelkam is kingdom. Uh, Zambuling means Earth. So very interesting. This word Jambuling, right? It comes from the word uh, Jambu Ling. Ling means uh, world or uh, realm. And Jambu comes from the word Jambu. It's a type of tree, Jambu tree. So it comes from the uh, the word uh, the, the word uh, the India before was also known as the uh, term Jambud Vipa which means the land of the Jambu. And this particular word, Zambuling, is in 
in fact, uh, are influenced by the word Jambudvipa, which means the land of the Jambu. So, Kebar Papa, which means noble. So, Jambuling means earth. Kebar Papa means noble, noble in merits and deed. Ke Zangma means speaking proficiently. Zangma usually means clean, but here Ke Zangma doesn't mean to have a clear voice. It means Ke Zangma means to speak a language proficiently. Wasarje means miraculous. Netang situation, good at all means laughable. Okay, so uh, so today's idiom, the first one is Kyupa Lebung. Kyupa Lebung. Kyupa Lebung, which means beaten to flat. This idiom means to be badly beaten. If someone is said to have been beaten to flat, it means that the person is beaten very badly, meaning someone was beaten by someone very violently, very badly, and they were injured very severely. Which means the thief was beaten to flat. Meaning that they have caught the thief and then he was beaten very badly. Started a hundred without a single come, which a uh, come means outcome, meaning one has started a hundred different things, but unable to finish even one. So this idiom means to start a hundred different tasks, but not being able to finish or complete a single task. Okay. To spend a lot of time to complete a single task is greater than to start a hundred without a single come. It's better to it's better and it's greater to to uh to to invest and spend time in completing a single task then to start a hundred things at a single time and not being able to finish a single one. So this is the idiom for today. So, so today we have studied uh, some of the particles uh, from the particles showing emotions, particles showing quantity and continuative particles. So uh, we will continue the same topic for the next class because we have other few more particles to go. And then afterwards, uh, I think we'll uh, we'll try to uh, integrate using these aphorism in our daily dialogues or conversation, some examples of those usage, of course. And most of these aphorism, it also takes a great deal of understanding of the, the way of how Tibetan people think, because it has uh, a great, uh, it has a great connection, or it is very much in uh, grain in the lives and the philosophy and ideology of Tibetan people. And the examples are things that are related to things which are grown, used in their daily life. So therefore, okay, so uh, does anyone have any questions regarding today's lesson? Any questions regarding today's lesson? Yes, uh, uh, the Kihu uh, and kema kehu both means uh, to show a great deal of uh, sorrow. So this particle that you are seeing, kihu, right? Mm -hmm. Kema kihu, which means to show a great, uh, to show a great deal of sorrow, or to show a great deal of sadness. So both of these have a similar, similar meaning. Kihu and uh, and normally both of them are translated as alas to show a great deal of sorrow. Lasso, I hope this clarifies this. Uh, rikshu means uh, tradition. Uh, so rikshu uh, means tradition, a sort of uh, the ways, uh, the things that people have been 
uh, people have been following for a very long time, like a tradition of a nation or a culture. So you see this uh, particular uh, grammatical system that you, we are studying, like Tibetan conversation, we have these grammatical system. Uh, these are also Tibetan culture. And then we have the Tibetan herbal uh, medicine, which is also Tibetan tradition. So, uh, I mean, there, there isn't a, like, uh, what can you elaborate? What do you mean by, uh, through Tibetan perspective? Ah, okay. Uh, Rik, which means the, which means a kind or, uh, of, let's say a national, uh, like we say, uh, Tibetan race, right? So that is Rik. Shung means, uh, the, a sort of a um, teaching or a sort of a uh, teaching or uh, shung means a treatise or teaching that has been passed down from generation to generation. So rik shung means a certain teaching that has been passed down in a particular, uh, a, in a particular, uh, uh, in a particular country from one generation to the next generation. So Rik, uh, usually it could be understood as kind or uh, a race, like Tibetan race. And then Shung means a teaching that uh, is passed on. The word Shung itself means something that goes vertically down. So you can understand it as uh, a sh something that comes from the, the first ancestor and then it goes down to the generation. So Rik Shung something that is passed down through generation as a teaching in a particular group of people. So I hope this uh, clarifies it. So do we have any more questions? So if you have any questions, you can ask it. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, hum. Uh, which, which hum are we talking about? In this case, ah, that's Sanskrit. That's not Tibetan. So, that's oh, so you're seeking, uh, talking about the Sanskrit term "hum." That has to be do with that has to do with the Sanskrit grammatical system. Uh, and I don't, uh, I don't think it means uh, as much as my understanding is there. I don't think that it has to do with exclamation. So, yes, but uh, if you want more clarification, it could be done through the uh, Sanskrit uh, understanding. So, in Tibetan, it's not a Tibetan, so I cannot further clarify here. Watch follow, have, uh, to, so are you asking if watch has, uh, uh, has a, a tusum or uh, like, uh, you mean it has? Uh, yeah, the, because uh, sometimes, like, this chat is it the same as Pak Chet? Pak Chet, yes, yes, yes. Pak Chet, yes. Pak it's the same as Pak Chet. Because sometimes Pak Chet song and Pak Chet go. Yes, this is. Usually we have different tenses mm -hmm. and also sometimes we use like uh god god uh, mm -hmm. so does this follows the same uh, system or way uh this this particular ch is uh, similar to the uh so it follows the same thing lasso lasso so this is it for today. And uh, if you have questions, please ask in the group and I'll try to answer. I have been saying this for a long time, haven't I? But I'll, I promise that I'll answer it as soon as possible. So for those who, of you whom I have not answered till now, uh, very sorry. Uh, this month was particularly very busy, so I couldn't answer anything. But I'll try to answer it as soon as possible. So make sure that you post it there because everything is, every question is saved. 
So I try to get it uh, in accordance to the chronological uh, order. So therefore, uh, please make sure that you send it there and I will uh, respond to them uh, when I get time or as soon as possible. So this is it for today. And thank you very much for joining in. I hope that all of you have enjoyed the uh, benefited from this as much as I've enjoyed teaching this class today. And I hope everyone of you uh, to uh, uh, to see every one of you for the next class. Uh, and I hope everyone have a good morning, evening, afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Lasso, this is it for today. And Tashi Tele to everyone. Lasso. Lasso.